Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? It is I, Van Lathan. What's up? It's Rachel Lindsay. Big Rach. Big Rach, put your thing caps on. It is time for higher learning. Rach, we are doing the podcast a day late. It's actually a day late that we're doing the podcast. Like, we're we're stacking up podcasts because yesterday was a special holiday. Yep. You know what day it was? Columbus Day. Just kidding. Ooh. I'm just Ooh, kidding. Y'all, I'm kidding. Rach. I'm kidding. <laughs> Rach. But see, here's a problem with kidding like that. You could be clipped. They could clip you off oh, right they're there. they're not going to do that to me. And then, they, and then, how do you know I won't do it? If you they, are a faithful thought warrior, then you know that last <laughs> episode we said we were recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day, which is what it should be. Let's start, let's start this. How do you feel about the change from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day? How do you feel about that? I mean, I feel like it's well warranted, especially because we now people are understanding the person that Christopher Columbus was and what he wasn't. And the things that we were taught about him is not the actuality of what he was. Like, I mean, I don't know if there's anything positive to say about Christopher Columbus to be honest with you. So the fact that they're replacing it with the people who actually lived in this land, on this land, um, and honoring them, I feel like it's something we should have done a long time ago. Okay, I have issues with Indigenous Peoples Day. You don't like the name? No, I don't. I don't think, I don't like the name. I don't think it goes far enough. All right, so if you've done any studying of the Colombian exchange, the world fundamentally changed because of Christopher Columbus. Okay. Like when I say fundamentally, like there are less species on Earth. There's there's like all there's less spe- there's less uh, like fruits and vegetables and stuff because things became homogenized, right? Like agriculture spread all over the world. You know, of course, disease and all of that stuff. Like there's a great book about it. You can read it about it. You can read about it, and you'll you'll get an idea of how fundamentally Christopher Columbus really changed the world for the worse all over the place. Now, there are people that are going to argue, hey, you know, this and this and that, you know, brought this. And if you're some kind of diehard Americanist, you'd say, hey, it's not all bad. He hipped us to a world that we could come rape and pillage, okay? But if you look at this in any type of logical and reasonable way, Christopher Columbus is one of the worst terrorists in the history of the world. And that does, does, that's not just because what that also has to do with the brutality in which they showed the people here. So here's the deal with Columbus Day. So you change it to Indigenous Peoples Day, where you celebrate the indigenous people, I'm assuming, beautiful indigenous people all over the world who had learned to a degree how to live a symbiotic relationship between them and the lands that they lived on. Now, they had problems, and like like all other human civilizations have problems. There was fighting, there was this, there was that, but not nearly on the scale of the savagery that was imported from across the seas. They'd never seen anything like it. Okay. Columbus landing on the... Columbus Day is nothing to celebrate for indigenous people. So what we should do is not change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, We should come up with another day to celebrate indigenous peoples all over the world, right? And we should change the name of this day, of that day, should I say, not to Indigenous Peoples Day, but to Fuck Columbus Day. That is the name of the day. It should not be about, it should be about Fuck Columbus Day. I'm I'm serious about this. Fuck them. Because there, there are very few people who have done as terrible things that have changed the world as fundamentally as he has that get any type of celebration. Well, actually, there are quite a few when you think about it. But still, in this particular, not Indigenous Peoples Day. So while we're looking back on a day that's connected to Christopher Columbus, a guy who slaughtered most of the indigenous people that are over here and diseased and brainwashed the rest, it should be fuck him on this day. And every day, it should be about learning the intricacies of how bad the Colombian exchange was and how bad Christopher Columbus was. And then on another day, like a nice day, like in the summer, in the springtime, we should all go out and plant 
and and be around the earth and be in tune with nature. And that should be Indigenous People's Day. Okay, I disagree with you in the sense that I agree with everything that you said, but I disagree with you about the day because I feel like changing the day is a big F you. The F you is for my mom. The a big F you for Christopher Columbus. Is it not? Because you're taking away something that was given to him to honor him, to celebrate him. And instead it's like, actually F you, Christopher Columbus. We're going to give it to the people who actually we should be celebrating. The people that you terrorize, you know, and, and, and completely change the whole dynamic of Western culture or whatever. You know, like I think that that is exactly what it is doing, even though they haven't replaced the day yet, right? You look at your calendar and let me make sure I'm right on this. You look at your calendar. It still says Columbus Day. That's because the change to Indigenous Peoples Day, in my opinion, is too passive. It's too passive. And it hasn't it's like, changed. It, it, but no, but they, what I'm saying is we've changed it as in the, 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 the same people of the world have changed it. But it's still too passive. Here's the thing, Rach. Here's the thing. The thing is this. It's the same when they do these superheroes, right? When they say, okay, we have a new Spider-Man and he's black, even though Miles Morales is a fantastic Spider-Man. Now, most of the time they do this new Spider-Man, new superhero thing. It sucks, but Miles Morales, fantastic Spider-Man. Mm. Um, so they'll take, after years and years and years of Tony Stark being Iron Man, of Bruce Banner being a Hulk, Marvel will say, hey, there's not enough diversity. There's not enough diversity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these heroes, right? And then we're going to make them into a black person now. We're going to start over and make them into a black person, make them into an, an Asian, uh, make them into a Muslim. We're going to change it, right? Uh, whatever it is, we're going to change it. Yeah. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the problem with that, though. I know that Muslim is not a racist religion, but, you know, somebody from the Middle East, Middle East Muslim. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that is that, in my mind, Iron Man is still Tony Stark, Right? Okay. Captain America is Steve Rogers. The Hulk is Bruce Banner. You can't undo that, right? But what you could do was make new and amazing superheroes. And rather than Black Panther's not new, he came out in the 60s. He's new uh, to us, man. Oh, like, He's uh, right, new to us. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like you can make new and amazing superheroes and actually put something behind them. You see? Instead of retrading something old and trying to change it around and make it uplifting now, make new superheroes and maybe take the onus off Tony Stark and mm. Iron Man and, and, and whomever else and Rogue and Black Widow and then put it on the new superhero so we're not getting retreads of things that are already established in a bad way. When you, Columbus Day, same thing. It's new a good day point. It's a Columbus good day. point. But a Tony Stark and whoever else you name, because Lord knows I do not know these characters. Um, Tony Stark, I do. They don't have the history that Christopher Columbus has. So it's different when you replace them. And what I will also say is there's a story to be told. So when you talk about Indigenous Peoples Day, you'll be able to talk about what it used to be and why it changed. I just think that there's just like there's it's relevant to keep it on the same day. I still think it's a big F you. And I think that when you're talking about this, so you're writing about this in history, you're telling the next generation, you will be able to discuss this day and talk in terms of Christopher Columbus, but talk about him in a way that we were not taught. Talk about him in a way that like now, like you said, do you know, that? what's the name of the book? Uh, the name of the book is The Columbian Exchange. It's by Alfred W. Crosby. It talks about sort of the biological and cultural differences uh, of the world uh, after Columbus. And look, my only point is this. It's not a small thing. And because it's not a small thing, the reality is that uh, you have to look at it as a big deal. That's why you can't just change the name. You have to talk about how bad Christopher Columbus is. It's not Indigenous People's Day. That's a different day. They deserve their own day. Not a day. It's on the same day as their tormentor. They deserve their own day. They took it and away then, from him. Like, he took things away from them. No. Come on, man. Look at it. Look at it this way. I start the movement. The fuck Columbus Day movement. <laughs> Go ahead. That's start the, it. That's the movement I'm about. All right. Um, before we jump into what we're going on, <laughs> what we're doing this week, uh, let's pay some bills real quick. Okay, uh, so, um, a very interesting story. I talked a little bit to Shaquille O'Neal yesterday, Shaq, 
Shaq Why isn't Diesel. he? You talked to Shaquille and he's not on the podcast? What's going on, yeah. man? Uh, you know, Shaq, um, I asked Shaq if he wanted to come on the podcast today. Shaq was like, when? And I said, tomorrow. Didn't hear back. So maybe, so the reality is that Shaq was probably like, who, who's this guy I think he is? Asking me to come on the podcast with one day's notice. <laughs> I'm Big not? Shaq. I'm Big Shaq Diesel. I eat Papa John's pizza. Um, Shaq and Snoop both made headlines. And I'm wondering if this was even headline worthy. Shaq, I think, is 47, 48. Um, Snoop is around that same age. And both of these guys came out and just, just admitted that they voted for the first time. Both guys have voted for the first time. Uh, it's interesting that the response to Shaquille O'Neal saying that he is close to 50 and voted for the first time wasn't all positive. It was, to me, a lot of negativity in there and about the fact that this is... And it should. You think that there should be negative? I'm sh well, shocked at the way you just introduced this topic when you're like, Making okay. it seem like it's not a big deal. Uh huh. So yeah, like I don't. You, you don't I, think it's a big deal that someone's not voting, and specifically black people aren't voting? Now I know I have made the comment on the podcast uh -huh. before that at the very least people fought and died for our right to vote, and you told me I hate when people say that, and I was like, I don't understand. Why you hate when people say that? I think this is a huge problem, and I'm embarrassed for both Shaq and Snoop that they admitted this. I just think that there are so many questions that arise from this. Like, I literally, I was like, okay, so you're admitting that you haven't voted. Um, good for you, you know, for admitting it. Good for you for saying, you know what, I'm gonna vote. But for me, that's not enough. That you're admitting that you're voting for the first time. I need the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Like, how do we get to this place? What did you learn from, from, from your decision to start voting? When did you make your decision to vote? Why are you deciding to vote now? Who are you voting for? When did you learn? What did you learn from not voting? What, are you, what have you been doing this entire time? How did you feel when people heard you weren't voting and you didn't? As a black man, as a black man. So let me ask how you, do you this. Not Shaq's, vote? Shaq's not here. Okay, I'm not Shaq. Um, no, though, but these are oh, these fine. They're rhetorical. I know. I know, they're rhetorical. No, 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 no. I'm asking you. Quite, no, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm setting that up. Okay. Um, Shaq's not here. So okay. let's jump into the mind of Shaq, Rachel Lindsay. Let's jump into the mind of Shaquille I don't want to get in there or Snoop. Hey, look, it's a lot. Of, it's, it's a big mind. Okay. Why do you think Shaq or Snoop, guys who actually have very similar life trajectories? Very similar, okay. if you look at him. Shaq starts out, uh, army brat, not a rich guy. Not poor, but not a rich guy, right? Army brat. Moves all around, uh, ends up having a father figure in his life. By the time Shaq is 19, he is famous. He is destroying. If you guys ever want to see what a joke basketball could be, don't look at Shaq when he was in the NBA. I mean, he had some unbelievably dominant times in the NBA, the most dominant in the history but look at Shaq at about 290, 295, <laughs> agile, quick, lean, and deadly when he was at LSU. It was a joke, except to Christian Leitner. But it was a joke to everybody else. Um, now, Snoop around that same time, 19, uh, was on the precipice of being the biggest rap star in the world. Snoop Dogg was. Okay? Yeah. Both guys. Very early on. A lot of money. They make it. They're world famous, all right? Then they both become masters at their craft, one being a basketball player, the other one being a rapper. And then after that, they become cultural icons. So Shaq is more than a basketball player. Snoop is more than a rapper. Right. They have a very, very specific identity in American culture. So they're very, very similar. Okay. Why would you think that either one of those guys, given the scenarios I just gave you, are there any reasons that pop into your head about why they wouldn't vote? I mean, the first thing I would think of is that they don't think that their vote counts and it won't do anything to benefit them or black people. That's the, that's the only thing I can think of, right? Which is a common thought, but it still doesn't make it okay. It, it, is, that, is that what you would say? 
No, see, because I don't think for either guy that it has anything to do with helping black people. I think if you ask Shaq or Snoop whether or not they help black people, they could probably give you a phone book thick. Snoop started I'm a football league. I'm not saying that they league. don't. I, I want to be clear. I, I, I'm not saying that they're no, not no, no, helping I, I, black I, I people. I know. So what I'm saying is, I don't think that that's it. Um, I, I don't think that it has anything to do. They don't, they probably don't think that voting is actually helping black people or either they don't think that. I, or I it, think that, yes. Or, or it never occurred to them that the way to help black people is to vote. Okay. So they're, even though they're two different things. So it might be, it never occurred to them that in order to help black people, you have to vote. Snoop wants to help black people. He starts a football league. Starts okay. a football league, gets the kids off the streets, sends all of these guys to LSU. Shaq starts a record label, employs black people. All kinds of businesses employs them. He's Shaq and Snoop have undoubtedly done more for black people than I have, and I've never missed a vote. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that I'm interested, I'm not interested as much as why they didn't vote before, because I think I can I can pretty much understand that. What I'm interested in is why they're voting now. Because after, because after 50 years, uh, of after almost 30 years of being a voter, nearly just about 30 years of being a voter, what gets them out to the polls now? That, to me, is the more fascinating thing. I think it shows, one, how bad things are. And maybe, like you said, they didn't understand how their vote would matter or how their vote can help people who look like them. And now they're in a better place where they're understanding how impactful their vote is. But the reason I guess I have a problem with it, one, that is one of my questions that I would have asked if Shaq was here or Snoop was here. You know, why are you coming out with this now and why are you deciding to vote now? And I think it's something that you said. You said that they aren't just, it's not, Snoop's not just a rapper and Shaq's not just a basketball player. They've become cultural icons. And when you have that type of power, you have a certain responsibility. And most people who look up to you as a cultural icon aren't going to have the same path that you have. So how do you set an example and how they can be impactful and they can do things to help their community or help themselves or have a better world and better opportunities than, than they currently do? And that's through voting. And so I guess that's why I have a huge problem with it because maybe you didn't feel the need to do that, but you're in a place of power and of position where the decisions that you make impact people who look up to you. And I just, I just have such, you know, and I didn't listen to the full podcast. I know Shaq came out and said it on his podcast and maybe he did explain why he's doing it now. But to me, I understand why people are being negative about it. I understand why they're having a huge reaction to it because I did. I, I, you know, I'm not one to be quiet, but I almost wish they hadn't said it. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't disagree with you more. I almost wish, just, just go I, vote and just no, don't, I, don't say anything. No, I couldn't disagree with you more and I'll tell you why. I, I, I've I never disagreed with you more on any podcast, ever. Oh, then okay. I'll just never disagree with you more. So. Wait, which part? Which part are you disagreeing with? The fact that they shouldn't have said that this is the first okay. time that they've ever voted. Okay. So Shaq and Snoop, if you look at the, let's, let's go back to when these guys both got famous, 1990 or whatever, 1991, 1992, 1993. So you go from HW to Clinton, to Bush, to Obama, to Trump. I bet you that Shaq and Snoop, even despite the fact of who Barack Obama was, right? Couldn't see much difference in those four guys. I bet you that there was nothing about any one of those four guys that made them run out and say, I got to vote. I got to vote. Especially in the situation where those guys live in California and, and, they, and you know, Obama's going to carry California and stuff like that. It wasn't like a nip-tuck thing. No one could impress upon them. And 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 get them to kind of be a part of a political machine. They're they're a generation younger than the Magic Johnsons and the Creams and the guys like that, who jumped into those political machines. Also, something else that we never talk about: there's a '90s wasteland of political activism from important athletes. You don't you you in the '90s you didn't hear from Barkley, you didn't hear from Jordan, you didn't hear Definitely. from any of those guys. You didn't like the 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 guys that were politically active in the '90s were your Craig Hodgeses and your uh, Mahmoud Abdul Raoufs. 
there were some other gods, but there was a wasteland. There was, it was a decade of prosperity and things like that. Even the rappers and stuff, Diddy and all the voter die stuff, that was 2000. All throughout that time, everybody right. was getting money, okay? And American politics was, was something that you cared about during election time. I think it's fascinating to me that those guys have finally recognized political danger. That fascinates me. It fascinates me that they're seeing that Trump is different from all of those other guys. That's fascinating. You can have a regular bad candidate. You can have a regular bad administrator, a regular bad executive. But both of these guys are saying there is something different and novel here. And not only do I need to vote, I need to tell people that I've never voted before because I need to inspire people. I need to go through this and inspire people who might have never voted before to vote so that there is no more me's. I'm saying I'm voting after all of these years and not voting. I'm getting into this because I realize, remember these guys didn't vote in 2016 either. So Trump wasn't bad enough the first time for, to, get them out, to get them out to vote for Hillary or to stump for her. But now, after years and years of this, they see how bad it is. And to me, when you see people that are doing that, that's a wake-up call to everybody because those guys are rich and those guys are iconic. That's a wake-up call to everyone. So when I saw that, I was like, damn. Think about what happens now if the rich people, the pe Shaq and Snoop going to be rich on November 4th. They're going to be rich. Right. Their kids going to be rich. Think about what happens if the rich people are scared enough to go out to the polls or to send in that ballot. So what you just gave me, and, I, and I'll give you a hand clap for that, is what they didn't give me. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But what I, the first thing I said I had a huge problem with it is that you're telling me that you're going to be voting for the first time, but you're not giving me the who, what, when, where, why, and how. You did and say I that. feel like if you're going to say I'm voting for the first time, then we need to understand how you got here. And, I, and, and you just beautifully describe that. And I, and I don't doubt that that's the case for them. But I think that for the people looking up to them, they need a little bit more. Because what I don't want is, well, so-and-so didn't vote until they were 50 or 40 or whatever it may be. We need to understand why they're making a change and why it's so important for this, not just to do it, but to say why they're doing it. Um, yeah. Then I can hop on board with that. Shaq did say that he never understood the Electoral College. And Who he shouldn't does? understand it. Who does? Because... It's fucking stupid and was, you <laughs> no, know. What? You, don't need, you don't need to fully understand that to be voting. Uh, but, he's, but he said um, he's doing, a, and he's also doing a lot of voting campaigns because he's getting out the vote this year and he didn't want to be a he's hypocrite. Great. So he wanted to tell people uh, that he, um, that he, he was going to go ahead and go out and vote. I just thought, and I saw a lot of people, I, I saw a lot of people, a lot of people giving them flat for this. And I understand it. I get it because that type of apathy ends up being the reason why the structures in America don't benefit people because even though Shaq and Snoop are rich and, you know, they might vote with their checkbooks a little bit and that's okay. They might vote for some tax cuts or something like that. That's okay. They, whoever. But they still do both have a connection to their community and you would assume that they would vote for the people there. And anybody that's not voting and representing on the behalf of the people in their community, you have to ask how much they love and care about them. Now, both of those guys express it in other ways. So when I heard people saying... You know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yo, these are dudes who are in the middle of it, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, and it's, 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 a, it's an interesting, interesting thing. So Shaq said it's never, it's never been more important to vote uh, than it has been, than it is now. So uh, he was in there kind of doing his thing. I, I want to bring something else up to you. Let's talk to you about this because there's something happening. Um, I think Offset and Cardi B are getting back together. Did you see this? I can't. I can't keep going in the circle. I think, what circle? What's, the what's Cardi the circle? B and Offset circle. We break up. We make up. You know, we, we're, we're confessing our love. We're throwing parties and buying Birkins. And then we're breaking up again when the next rumor starts. And then we're, it's the circle. It's the circle of their relationship. Just don't, I don't want to be involved in it. Let them so do them. You don't want Cardi B and Offset to be together? I don't care. I think it's the bigger, <laughs> it's, the, it's the real thing. I don't so, care. Here, so here's the thing. So obviously you guys, it was Cardi B's birthday this past weekend and her and Offset, uh, she was in Vegas. Well, by, which by the way, did coronavirus expire? Uh, did it? Great question, Van. Great question. 
Uh, and to some people, it seems like it, even though there was just an alert on the news that where we hit another milestone when it comes to coronavirus deaths, I believe 215,000 now. Yeah, yeah. man, uh, in some circles, it has expired. Trump mm. being the biggest one, because he's apparently immune to it. And um, looks like that's the same case for Cardi B and Offset and all the uh, the attendees at her birthday party. Uh, yeah, so they... they um they Meg the Stallion was there. You know, Meg is back out. Uh, like Cardi B is twenty eight. That's you, it. Yeah, what you thought? What, what, I don't what know she, why I thought she was older. She okay. lived the life. She's lived. She that's lived what I mean. The, like she's not because she looks. She looks great. It's just you know she's done a lot. Still, that's always lot. crazy. That's always crazy to me. What part? Like when I <laughs> when I meet a like a you know an adult film star or like a stripper. And they'll be, I'll be like, so you know, how long have you been in the business? And they'll be like, nine years. And I'll be like, oh shit, how old are you? You'd be like 26. I'm like, God damn, when did you start? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, when, like, when did you start? Like, I started recording under the table. And I don't want to know. I don't want to know if you started recording under the table. You're not supposed to be supposed to be 18, but no, think about it. You know, she she was a dancer for many years, but she's yeah. been rapping for for a while. So you don't care about the fact, you don't think that this is a good thing, that there's a family there, so it's a good thing that they're going to get back together. Okay, so you think maybe, that, that just maybe because, maybe, so just maybe because they're, they're a family unit, they should stay together. Even if it's toxic, even if it's a bad example for low culture, you think that because they had a child together, that means that they should stay together. I know you don't believe that, Van. I know you don't. I got to be honest with you. I don't know, and I'll tell you why. I know <gasps> that a to- I know that a toxic environment is bad for a kid. Yeah. But how do we know that they have a toxic environment? I mean, we know that 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 he. We know that Offset can't seem to keep his dick in his pants. But maybe beyond that, and you got to tell me the way this works. Maybe beyond that, things are rosy. Maybe when they're together, they're together, and things are good. Maybe there's some reason that. She doesn't, and maybe having maybe having the family. I I don't know because I really don't know because it's, we don't it's so know. public. You're right, right. We don't know. But the fact that you know it becomes public with his indiscretions, she's filing for divorce, and then it just seems like with 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 money and a party and a, a, the right bags, everything is all wow. you know great again. That's that's how it looks from the outside. I'm just saying. I, I, you're right. We don't know the ins and outs of their relationship, but like I was about Cardi when she was like, you know what? I'm doing this for me. I'm getting a divorce. It's necessary. I believed her. And then here we are. First of all, we don't, first of all, here's the thing. We don't know that they're getting back together. We assume that because they're it so chummy on like the birthday, it. it looks like they're getting back together. And secondly, yeah. we don't know that it was necessarily infidelity that pushed them apart. She said it wasn't. She said it wasn't. She said she was tired of arguing all the time. And if and to your that point, if they toxic. were arguing, that sounds, sounds toxic. toxic. To your point, if they were arguing all the time, they are toxic. Uh, or it is a toxic situation. I guess what I'm saying is that... I guess what I'm saying is that I was <laughs> fundamentally affected by my parents' divorce. And I don't want to see people get divorced, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, I, every time we come to this, my fucking inner child starts sc- screaming into the microphone. And sometimes you got to get a divorce. Sometimes you gotta get a divorce. But fuck, man. Y'all don't know what can happen. I'm telling you, it could be 20 years later, and you can only have seen your parents together once or twice. It's not great. It's fucked up. And I'm, I'm sorry. But you're so, you know what though, man? Let me just give you a moment. Because you're you. right. You're right. My parents are still together 40 plus years. I don't know what it's like to be on the other side of it. So I'm giving you my perspective. Ain't nobody you're right. ask you for their stats. Ain't nobody ask you for Shout your parents. Shout out to Sam and Kathy Lindsay. Ain't nobody <laughs> ask you for their stats. They got their points per game and rebound average. They've been together 40 <laughs> years and it's been going strong. They only had a bad period. 42. One, one, one six-week period back in 87 was bad. But other than that, it's been good. Ain't nobody ask you for your stats. You rubbing <laughs> it me and my sister's face. Ooh, I love you, Ebony. Y'all, he is salty. Yeah, I'm salty. I can't I love wait you, till Ebony my mom Lacey. trolls you again in a oh, social media that. comments. I saw can't her wait. troll me. I saw her troll me. I saw her troll. I like that. Spunky we're built, mom. We're really she building pr- up to this parents' too. day. Um, yeah, but look, I, but to your point, though, it, I, I hope that they're providing uh, a very stable and anxiety-free, 
you know, me and my mother have been talking a lot lately. And I think that, I, you know, my mother is a beautiful, amazing, insightful woman. Almost more insightful than I even knew. I've never, let me say something real quick. I have never given myself the opportunity to know my mother as a person. I wonder if we do that. I wonder if we get to know our parents as people and not like a job. She was a caregiver. She was a nurturer. She was a, a firefighter. She put out big fires. She did all of these things. But my mom is a like a person wow. with like experiences and her own heart and her own regrets and her own love and her own fears. And I don't, I've never invested into that. I've invested into like a Virgin Mary ideal. And we've been talking lately and I've noticed that, hey, she's got some shit to say too. <laughs> what Remember is that? the story you told? Oh, the pencil. <laughs> oh, yeah. My mother told me about, oh, I got to let her tell the story. I'll bring her on and let her tell the story. The pencil. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's just interesting. And when I think about that, I think about, you know, when families break up, it's, I've been thinking about nonstop what she lost. She told me, I, I'm not going to, she said, I was walking down the street in Beverly Hills crying. People were looking at me like, do you need us to call somebody and something like that? And like, because my mother told me, she was like, yo, I had a whole lifetime that like just got zapped away. Like a whole lifetime. She's like, you don't understand. She's like, I lived an entire lifetime that I didn't really live. Like it's mm. gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it was like, Jesus Christ, imagine living with that. What a brave, amazing, strong woman. Like, imagine. And still giving everything to me. It's like crazy to me. I can't understand it. Yeah. I, you bring up <sighs> a really, really good point, though, Van. And I don't know if it's generational because our parents come from a generation where you don't really tell the kids your business. You don't really talk about right. what's going on and how you feel. And you don't, I didn't really see them. My parents have emotion like that. It hasn't been till I've gotten older and now I'm in my own marriage and I'm mm -hmm. too learning things about things my parents went through in their marriage because they did not talk to us about that, those kinds of things. And I'm asking questions like you are. I, I was talking to my dad the other day when John Lewis died and I learned that my great, great grandfather was killed by the KKK and my great grandfather. That's how we ended up in Texas. Never knew that story till I started interviewing my dad and having a conversation. So I think it's it's something you learn when you get older because when we were younger, we weren't allowed to do that. We weren't allowed to have those type of conversa conversations. You're right. By the way, my dad would have led, would led with that story. The KKK story? It would have been one of the first things. she would let things, me talk to your dad. It, it would have been, it, it been one of the first things that he told me. This is the way my dad goes. <laughs> it's like, well, the first things he told it would have been one of the first things that would have been like, so son, every Christmas... Uh, Santa Claus is going to come bring you some presents, okay? Um, also, I don't know if you know this, but your Uncle Larry got killed by the white folks back in the 50s. Uh, I heard the story from Big Pop and then let me tell you what happened was he was down at the general store. There's always a general store. It general is. stores are bad for black people. If I could go back, let's say I could go back in time, right? I would tell black people, don't go to the general store. Don't go. But the general store was like every, it's like a universal term. That could have been the gas station. It could have been the corner store. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's just hard for me because even in The Color Purple, a lot of shit got popped crept at the general store. Right. You go to the general store, you're just down there, you're trying to get some sugar. The, the clerk behind there, this is how the general store <laughs> scene always goes. This is the general store scene. So there's a white woman that comes up, always a woman, and the general store clerk is super nice to the, to the white woman. Then a black woman comes through and the general clerk goes, what you want? It's, that's, 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 that's the scene is in every, <laughs> every racist movie back in the day. But anyway, I don't know what happened in the general store this time, but one of my uncles was in there and they fucked him up. Uh, that's a true story. Um, but look, uh, I, it, 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 no problem with Cardi B and Offset reconciling. The whole big party during COVID, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what to say about this. Yeah, I mean, was nobody was wearing a mask. I just saw like strippers and like, I mean, it looked like a fun party. I'm not going to lie, but no mask. What kind of example are you setting? And then we had the weddings, right? Two housewives got married, but Cynthia Bailey, Mike Hill got married. Congratulations to you guys. My but guy. Two, 
My guy, Mike Hill, my guy. We should talk to him about it. 250 plus people, mask. Were, I know I talked to Cynthia before. Uh-huh. I know they had all the protocols and everything. But when I saw mm-hmm. pictures, I didn't mm-hmm. see a lot of masks. Where did they get married at? Where does this happen at? Atlanta. Oh, it's, it's fine. Because the, the state and the city are open? or j- Atlanta, like jo- a- Atlanta told COVID no. COVID don't exist in Atlanta. Atlanta did tell COVID no. Did Ve- uh, Where was Cardi's party? Vegas? That was Vegas. Did, did Vegas tell Vegas. COVID no? Okay. I don't know about Vegas, but Atlanta, Atlanta, COVID tried to come to Atlanta, right? It tried to come. And when it got there, they turned up Jeezy loud. And COVID was like, I'll go to the next neighborhood. Because at least that's how they acting. Because no, these niggas COVID in Atlanta partying is, with them. They, these niggas in Atlanta wilding. Yeah. I mean, why, I mean, literally, Atlanta is just regular. It's just regular life in Atlanta. That's why my sister's still here. You're right. Good for her. <laughs> Tell her to stay. Tell her to stay. Where yeah. you know. Uh, all right. Um. So, Bill Burr. <laughs> oh yeah, Bill Burr. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we get into Bill Burr, okay. Let's make sure that we pay some bills real quick. All right, so Bill Burr pissed a lot of people off. Um, this past week, he was the host of SNL. I think he's one of the five top five funniest guys in the world. I, I love Bill Burr. I've always loved Bill Burr. Um, the comedy can get a little bit dark sometimes with Bill, but uh, he is nevertheless one of the funniest guys. His monologue on SNL, to me, was just amazing. Number one. All of it? Well, specifically the white woman part. Well, well first of all, <laughs> specifically the white. Well, woman part. Well, well, first of all, let's go to you. What did you think about Bill Burr's monologue and what he had to say? I thought it was on point, and I'll mm. specifically talk about the white woman part. Sure. Um, I'm trying. Oh, I found it. Okay, I'm trying to find something. So, this is an example of what Bill Burr was talking about because he said that white women have hijacked the movement. Right, eight seconds in, and they've made it about themselves. So I posted a video on Instagram of our story, just a preview of talking about why reparations for the black community are necessary. Sure. And a woman, a white woman, wrote me and said, What? Reparations? Reparations. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is what the food stamps and free housing are, huh? Where are the reparations to the white women raped by black men? Okay, okay. So I'm so sick of people in my DMs like that, that like sometimes <laughs> I'll just screenshot and just, po- just post it. And so when I posted it, I wrote Mondays and Karens. I can't tell you how many white women wrote me in my DMs and said, I understand what she said is wrong, but why do you have to call Karens? Now you're on her level. What? Did Mm -hmm. you just equate yourself to my own struggle because a name, Karen, has been used to describe problematic white women? And now you have made it about yourself. And this is what Bill Barr was talking about. And I thought he was so on point with it. Somehow you have taken one name. Bill Barr. Bill Burr. Because Bill Barr wouldn't say say any of that. Did I say Bill Bill Barr? (laughs) You said said Bill Barr. Bill Burr. Uh, Bill Barr wouldn't be saying any of that. Bill, Bill Barr, Barr Bill would, Barr would, Bill Barr would have sent me the language. message. He would have uh, sent Bill me Barr, the message. Yeah, right. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Bill mm-hmm. Burr. This is exactly what he was talking about. But no, I, I agree with it. The term Karen has now become problematic. They're saying it's almost racist to call women that way. And so something that was just used in fun, in jest to describe po- problematic white women has now been turned into a racist term. And that woman right there made it about herself as she talked about black men raping white women. And somehow people who have responded to that message have made it about them. Karen, I'm wrong for posting that and calling her a Karen. This is his example. So I have no problems with what he did in his monologue. I thought it was funny. I thought it was well executed. And Mm -hmm. I thought that it was correct. Now, and he, there was a part where he said that uh, he thought he felt like Pride Month was a little bit too long. Because uh, I, I guess it's in, when is Pride Month? Is it July? I think Pride Month June. is July. June. It's June. June. So he said Pride Month was a little too long for the gay people that they've never been enslaved. Our LGBT brothers and sisters, we are with you guys. And that uh, maybe they should have February and then the black people who are enslaved should get a, a great month like July. Now, obviously, 
he's in the the trade of being a, a a comedian, and that joke is going to stoke up some sensitivities because you're gonna get gay people, uh, LGBT people talking about their experiences and how, if we're being honest, I'm not going to compare it to any one thing that's happened in American history, but there's a sort of societal and cultural enslavement that they go through. Sure. Uh, being From the fact that they are not free to be themselves without mm-hmm. with violence, without being ostracized, without, you know, having someone uh, tell them to move to the back of society. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to compare anything to the transatlantic slave trade or chattel slavery, but I think they <laughs> deserve a month to be free and open. Whatever month they want Absolutely. is whatever. However, Bill Burr is being a comedian. And, and so, you know, that's the thing with that. So I, I understand why people who are sensitive about those things, this is very difficult to tell somebody who's lived a life uh, of incredible sort of um, oppression that, they can't be sensitive about something. Mm-hmm. You know, they're reacting to something real that happened to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but something struck me about what you said. Okay. Um, when you were talking about, talking to that lady, uh, she said, now you're on her level. Now you're on the level of the lady. The Yeah, that's what people were saying because I called her Karen. So here's the thing about the levels. To get on somebody's level. Okay. So let me tell you what you would have to do to be on the level of somebody who is white or or talking about those things like that. See, emotion in words is not going to be enough to get on the level. Mm -hmm. That's where people are, are, uh, are, um, are mistaken. They think that as soon as you say something or do something, then you are on that person's level. That's actually not true. You might be on their wavelength in being that you're reciprocating something that you got from them, but level is a different term. See, in order for you to be on her level, we'd have to have this conversation again about 375 years from now. Okay. 375 years from now of her people being enslaved, then leading to her people being politically and economically enslaved, and then leading to her people being culturally Mm -hmm. uh, and educationally enslaved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then after that, if you then wanted to trade barbs and somebody could choose a high road, then you might be on her level, right? Right. You, it, now there's a situation of equal experience, equal cultural resonance, equal sort of standing in the country where everyone gets to choose a level. And then if she goes low, then maybe you can do something else. Now, if you want to lay on the shield and be a martyr and say, hey, I'm not going to f- say fuck you when you say fuck me, then that's cool. I'm with that. Somebody got to do it. But I don't want to really hear the level shit. When people talk about getting on somebody's level, because these levels ain't the same. Not even close. It, it's, 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 it's not the same. So here's the thing. The Karen thing. Wear it. Wear it. Yeah. It, you know what it is? Don't even be, it's an early warning signal. It's like, I, I watched this thing about uh, these animals, and they were in this jungle, and they do this thing where I can't remember the, the animal. <laughs> My brain is really fuzzy today. <laughs> I can't remember the animal, but they give off a little buzz or something when there's a predator, right? And that buzz lets the other animals know, lets everybody else know that, hey, somebody's bad coming up the block. You might want to <laughs> get the hell out of here. The caring thing is that. Now, we're human beings, but the caring thing is us saying, hey, this type of person is dangerous. This type of person We'll send you this. If you're offended by the term Karen, the easiest thing you can do is just not be one. Mm. Boom. Yep. Yep. Boom. Just don't be one. Yep. But if you if you come at if you come at me with that dumb shit, you care. <laughs> Cause being a Karen is a choice. It's a decision that you make. We don't have a choice to be black. We're born this way. This is just the way that we are. Right. Right, we do have a choice though to put masks on and to not get a bunch of people together. I can't believe, can't believe you, Mike. Can't believe would, you, Mike Hill. Would you have gone to the wedding or to Cardi B's party if you had known that? Um, not known. Period. Would you have gone if you were invited? I ain't going to nobody's party. Okay, me neither. Like I, I don't I know gotta, if you go with wearing a mask, maybe. 
I go to my friend Tommy's house. I come back. Shout out Tommy Alter. I go to Tommy's house. Oh, I wonder if I can even still say that. No, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I go to I, I go to Tommy's house. I come back home. Those are the only places I go. Sometimes I go to Trayvon, Trayvon Free's house. Go over there and we watch um, and, we, and we do our movie together. Two distant strangers coming soon. Um. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, so. As we speak right now, they are doing their thing to confirm Amy Coney Barrett, which I get hungry every time I say her name. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coney. I think about the Coney from Sonic. You ever get the hot dog from Sonic? I got sick one time off after Sonic hot dogs. I've never been back. I've never told you my Sonic story before. Was it hot dogs for you too? It wasn't hot dogs. It was something else. Never told you it? Mm-mm. Okay, so Sonic will never advertise with us now, but I'll tell you what. I, w- I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't yeah, do it. A, no, it's okay. It's, I mean, but it wasn't I know Sonic's you think fault. I do everything, but I would not do Sonic. Wait, yes, you would. What are you talking about? I would not do Sonic. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I got food would. poisoning from them. Mm-mm. Oh, did you? You got food poisoning. So, so from you're saying the that hot dogs. From the hot dog gave you food poisoning. Yes. Now, I, don't, I don't know if I got food poisoning from Sonic. I think that I got, I caught a stomach virus from my niece. That's what I think happened to me. I think I caught a don't, stomach virus. Just say you want to keep eating at Sonic. You just don't want to talk bad. I don't eat there. I don't eat there. I don't okay. eat at Sonic. But this is what happened. So, I was, um, I was, it was election day 2004. Okay. Election day 2004. So, it was Kerry versus Bush. Yes. All right. I had an off day from Best Buy. I, went I to, could uh, totally see you working at Best Buy. I was the best. <laughs> Which section? Home theater. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Home Go theater, ahead. baby. Home theater. Home theater. I was the man. I was the man. <laughs> um, so I had a day off from Best Buy. I went to Best Buy. got my check. Got my little $300. Thought I was the man. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, um, and then I went to Sonic. So I was going to get the check, go to Sonic, and uh, uh, go back and watch the, and finish watching the election after I voted. So people don't remember about that election is early on, it looked like Kerry could win. Yeah. Like he was pulling off a couple of states early on. Like it looked like Kerry, I remember Rush Limbaugh was on there saying outrageous things like, maybe the founders had it right when they only let landowners vote. Because now we got people like Britney Spears deciding elections and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whatever. So I eat. It wasn't a coney. It was, I got some chicken tenders, some fries, and an ocean water. Do you know remember oh, ocean water? Oh, the ocean water. Yeah. I miss the it. The ocean water. Okay, mm-hmm. so I, I ate all of it. All right. Now, my niece had been sick with the stomach flu. Okay. Okay. And the whole house had gotten it except for me. Everybody had gotten it except for me. So I eat all my food. I'm feeling fine. I get there and I start sitting, I start sitting down and um, I'm like, hmm, I'm going to throw up. That quickly? I, I just, as soon as I sit, as soon as I sat down, I'm like, hmm, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. It's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen. But I want to see what's going on on the uh the screen. Okay. I want to see what's happening on the screen. So I'm like, I'm going to throw up. Um, everybody's looking around and Carrie loses another state and then what's his face goes, it's all but impossible for him to make up the ground right now. As soon as we call this state, we're going to call Judge w, George W. Bush as being, you know, reelected, whatever, whatever. So I remember before that happened, it looked like it was about to be over. So I'm like, guys, I'm just going to, I don't think we can win. I'm going to call it, get up, you go up the stage. I remember I stood up. And as soon as I stood up, I grabbed my mouth. Ugh. I, one I, of those. I, 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 gra- I, I grabbed my mouth. And, and Katrina went, what's wrong with you? And before you knew it, blah. Oh, when I say, God. When You're I too say old for blah, that. When I say <laughs> blah. And the thing about it was, because of the ocean water, it was blue. Oh, and it stained. It was, it destroyed their rug. 
Oh my god! <laughs> Did they kick you out one. after that? No, I remember Ian went. Ian went. Ian went. <laughs> Wait a second! Ian's face. Everybody was so. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was so freaked out. And then the thing is, <laughs> everybody, everybody was so freaked out. And then they were so freaked out that I was amused. And so I got my hand in front of my face and I'm, and I'm, and I'm covering my face and I'm laughing. Oh, with gross. V- vomit all over my hands, all over my face, all over my shirt. And Ian looks at me and Ian like, nigga, go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am my Ian. God. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's not even their fault. I think I got the virus from, but I haven't eaten that Sonic since. See? I haven't eaten that Sonic since. I haven't eaten that Sonic since. By the way, I think that's the last time I vomited. 2004. Really? Yeah, I haven't vomited. Like, I got a cat, I got a good stomach on me. Like, I that's do too, but it's usually drinking for me. <clears throat> yeah, and then you just give up the, you just give it up. Anyway, so Amy Coney Barrett makes That is gross. Me- I just saw the whole thing. Everybody has that story of one person who did it. For me, it was this dude named Landon in the third grade, and it was, <laughs> and he had sunny delight. It was See? sunny delight, and he stood up. And he covered uh-huh. his mouth and it went all over the desk. It like it was like a fountain. I will never oh, forget. It's embedded. I think the teacher sent us home after that. Yeah, she probably <laughs> we had all went of, home. Yeah. Oof, disgusting. Uh no. So Amy Coney Barrett right now Ugh. is talking to senators and she's getting she's getting confirmed. Um, they're they well, they're deciding whether or not to confirm her. They're going through the whole process. And here's the thing about Amy Coney Barrett, and I want to I want to uh, to ask you if you think this is uh, problematic in any way, okay? Uh, there was a time back in the day where I guess she was asked about the N-word. Did you what? hear about this? No, I did not. She says that using the N-word in the workplace is not hostile or abusive. No, she now. Where did she say this? Hold on for a second. I gotta find it right now. Oh I don't think my she god! Said it. Uh, I think it was part of. Here it is. It's a racial discrimination case. This is what happened. So there was a racial discrimination case for her to for for her to decide. This one. Amy, this is what it says. Barrett wrote uh, for a unanimous three judge panel in 2019 that upheld the dismissal of a workplace discrimination lawsuit by Terry Smith a black Illinois transportation employee who sued after he was fired. Smith's claims included that he was called a racial slur by supervisor Lloyd Colbert. The N-word is an, the N-word is an egregious racial epithet, um, uh, Barrett wrote in Smith versus Illinois versus Department of, uh, of Smith versus Illinois Department of Transportation. That's it. Smith can't win simply by proving that the word was uttered. He also must demonstrate that Colbert's use of this word altered the conditions of his employment and created a hostile or abusive working environment. Barrett went on to say that Smith introduced no evidence that Colbert's use of the N-word changed his subjective experience of the workplace. To be sure, Smith testified that his time at the department caused him psychological distress, but that was for reasons that predated his run-in with Colbert and had nothing to do with his race. His tenure at the department was rocky from the outset because of his poor track record. Okay, your thoughts on that? I'm trying to grasp this because, first of all, I've never heard this. Second, I know I have not watched all of the confirmation hearings. They're on the second day as we do this podcast. And today was the day where they started asking her questions. I did not hear anybody address this. I could be wrong. I haven't listened to the whole, I didn't listen all day. I am more so floored because this is a woman woman with not one, but two black children that she has adopted from Haiti. Yes. And you don't understand the weight and the importance and the hate behind the N-word to where simply saying the word is enough to create a hostile work environment environment because of what that word means when someone spews out that type of language to a black person. Mm -hmm. How do you not, one time is enough to create a hostile work environment. 
one time. And the fact that she says no evidence was provided to show that that was there, it blows my mind. And this is why people have a problem. And I'm not saying that I necessarily do, but this right here is an example why people have a problem with white people adopting black children. Because you don't Ooh. find the... It, I'm not, I didn't oh, say... I'm, no, right, Rach, I'm... I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not, I have a the, the, problem the, with it. No, I'm no, no, not no, no, saying no, 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 it, but what no, I'm saying I'm, is... I'm this not saying is, anything. I'm saying... I'm not saying... I'm not in any way trying to impede your opinion. I'm just saying that you really went there. I like be, that shit. Because... This is what people have it like. This is a prime example of it. People, there are, there are, a, I'm not saying I'm one of these people, but there are a circle of people who truly feel like white people shouldn't adopt black people because they don't fully understand and get the experience and aren't going to be able to provide that to their black children. I don't necessarily agree with that, but this right here is an example to play into that school of thought, and rightfully so. If you don't understand the weight of that word, and you don't understand how just writing it, reading it, saying it is hostile, you don't need to have black children in your home. I'm sorry. Point blank, yeah. period. And I find it also interesting because if you are watching the confirmation hearings, you're seeing two stories, the tell of two stories from the Democrats and the Republicans when they're talking to Amy Coney Barrett. And when the Republicans are talking about her, they're talking about her being a great woman, how qualified she is. And what else are they highlighting? The fact that she adopted two black children. But when you come from that type of school of thought and not, you didn't just say it in a group of friends in secret, you wrote it in a published opinion. That's all I need to know about you right there, that you don't understand that. I have a huge problem with that. Yeah. Incredibly well said. Pithy. Pithy, by the way. Pithy from Big Rage. Pithy. Um, pithy. <laughs> um, I'll say this. If I'm working somewhere and I'm working with a white person and they say the N-word, it's a hostile workplace. From both sides. I'll tell you right now, from me, from me as I'm well. About to, I'm about to say, it's hostile. If it wasn't hostile before, for them, I'm about to make it hostile. <laughs> right. Like, it, it, it's, it's hostile. It's a hostile workplace. It's hostile. By the way, it don't have to be in the workplace. You see, if we, if if it's so-and-so's last day brunch, or if we go, we used to go to Cinco, and uh, somebody was leaving TMZ every week until one day was my week. Every somebody was out of TMZ every single week. And so when they were uh when they would leave or you know we go to this place called Cinco. But it's a great place by the way. Mexican hmm. food over there in um uh in in uh, Marine Del Rey area, you know, right there, Lincoln. So we go over to Cinco and we hang out. See if we go over there with C to Cinco, we're away from TMZ now. We've left. We're all sitting around at a table. We eating the nachos, we eating the guacamole, the margaritas are flowing. And somebody's, and one of my coworkers says to me, Man, what you think about this nigga Mark Trout? I hope he hits a home run. The workplace has become hostile. What happened at Cinco, as you were talking about Angels baseball, will now then be carried on into next day and next week, meaning it don't have to happen in the workplace. If you are my coworker and it happens, it's hostile time. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 it's so is it's it's you don't have to. It you can make you can create a hostile, uncomfortable workplace all kinds of ways. Right. Like all kinds of ways, and especially using the a number one pedigree, top power ranked, gold standard racial slur certainly is a way to create a hostile workplace. Look, I'm not going to act like I went through the ins and outs of this case with a fine-tooth comb. I'm not going to act like that. I'm not going to act like I know whether or not this situation was decided the way that it should have been decided. I don't know. I'm not about to front. Like, I know how that was supposed to go, and I'm not about to say that. Mm -hmm. What I will say, though, is that that opinion in and of itself is a bunch of fucking bullshit. Right. Because if 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 you're somewhere it, it, and and I hear the N word from a white coworker or superior, it's hostile. It's going I, down. I, just, I can't get over the children. You know what? If you want to do that and you have that in your own life, but now you're subjecting that thought, you're raising children under that same type of mentality. And I can only imagine the conversations they must have have must have had in 2020 with everything going on, which a senator did ask her about, actually. 
Um, and of course, you know, she gives, and I'm not saying that she hasn't, you know, had these deep conversations with her children, but when you, when you write an opinion like that, I can only imagine what you must be saying with what's happening right now with the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to be, well, first of all, you don't need to be thinking that way, but you also don't need to be objective in your, in your thought. You need to be subjective because you have black children. Right. Uh, although, I don't know, so something else happened over, over the, uh, the weekend. I don't know if you saw I'm, it. I'm very mad that you just said that. Like, I'm, I'm mad. I am what? mad that if, like, whatever, what, I don't know what you were reading from with the Amy Coney Barrett. I'm, like, yeah. really bothered by that. You're upset? Yeah. You should Go be. ahead, change the subject. Like I did not know that. Maybe I'm upset one that I didn't know, but two. I know it has nothing. It really, it really does isn't going to affect the fact that she is going to be confirmed. You're trying to say you won't put them hands on Amy, Amy Coney Barrett? I didn't say that. What well, would you would you fight Amy Coney Barrett? Would if she fight? gave me a reason to. <laughs> so what you're trying to say is the N-word is not enough no. of a reason? I, she didn't wow. say it. She didn't right. say it. Though. Here we go. Here it. we go. This they is gonna become a segment. It. No, she, no, she, she, she kind of said. It. It. Let me tell you something. There's a such thing as secondhand in word saying. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Now, man. I'm not gonna name who did it. I'm not gonna name any names. But there is somebody that works very closely with us here on this podcast that was guilty no, of second. I know of, he did not. Of no, second he did degree. Not. Don't you do it. Second him. degree. Yes, I was did. a witness to it. That is not second degree. I'm not going to say who it is, but I had to let him know. You can say you can say the N-word second degree. For example, if you walk up to a white person and you say, I used to do this all the time, by the way. If you walk up to a white person and you say, what's happening, my nigga? And they say, nothing much. I go, <laughs> so you think you're my nigga? Would you say that? Uh... I probably have in the past. I don't, I don't. I can't think of them, but I've been drunk, so maybe I have. Uh, so you think you're my nigga? Well, I used to do this game all the time, and they'd be like, "Well, no, you said I was." I'm like, "No, you agreed." But you agreed. Agreeing with someone using the N word is secondhand N word usage. I sent a text message to somebody that works with us after they asked me to do something, and I said. They said something, and I was like, all right, my nigga. And they went, okay, cool, got you. And I was like... So you, you probably made him uncomfortable, and he just wanted to get out, abort the conversation. I was like, so you agree with the usage of the word? And he was like, uh, absolutely not, but you said it, not me. I'm like, second degree. That's <laughs> you know second what? I'm not going to let you put that on our word uses. I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to say who it is. All I know is that this what this what HR, HR, this what HR should know. <laughs> this is what HR should know. We've talked about it. <laughs> He's my guy. We've moved on. But don't think I have forgotten. And all, all the white people out there, we know the second degree. And I will say that Amy Coney Barrett writing that opinion and saying that the N-word, which she had to say in her mind a million times while she was writing this because she was thinking of that. So that's number one. You know she said it in her mind. And then saying that it wasn't hostile, that's egregious an aggravating second degree N word usage. That's egregious rage. I find it so appropriate degree. that we led into this topic by talking about vomit. Because that's <laughs> that is what that is how I feel at the moment. <laughs> egregious. Mm. Egregious. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, the Lakers won an NBA championship. Oh, Lakers, let's go, let's go. Purple and gold. It's the Lakers, it's the Lake Show. And woo-hoo! I just made that song up. Okay, I was going to say, I've never heard that before. I That's just really made cute. It up. That's real cute, oh, man. That was, that was my Lakers song. Um, They fucked over Miami, which is, I, I guess, where Brian is. Hey, right now. They, Miami won more games than anybody else did against them in the playoffs. Good for Miami. Miami. Went farther Miami. than we thought they would. Miami play fantastic. They have a, they have the right mix of veterans and young cats that are on the rise. Miami will be back. Um, and they are a great team and a great organization. Now, I called this. I said that LeBron James would win this year because it's a... LeBron James has an interesting situation going on with him. Okay. Uh, there are movies where... You ever see a movie where somebody sells their soul to the devil? No. Uh, the, You've never I, seen 
You never name seen one a movie mo- where some bamboozled, oh God, book two, oh God, you devil, where people sell their souls to the devil? Never seen that? No, no. So, but some say thing, that's what the Kardashians did. Okay, but here's the thing about selling your soul to the devil. There's always a catch. Okay? There's always a catch. Of and course. so, um, because you'll you'll like, for example, in uh, in Bamboozled, he gets he sells his soul to the devil, Brendan Fraser, for three wishes. And every time there's a every time during one of the wishes, there's like a catch to it, right? So he sells his soul to the devil to be. A ba- uh, like a, a, a fantastic, beautiful ladies' man or whatever like that so that he can have the girl of his dreams. He wants to be a ladies' man, dashing, all of that, so he can have the girl of his dreams. And uh, she makes him all of that, but then she he, she makes him gay. So then he doesn't want the girl of his dreams. I've seen... I, I, this is... Sorry. The whole time I've been thinking, this is coming to me. I've seen this somewhere. Right. American Horror Story. Go ahead. They sell, they sell their souls to the devil Angela Bassett. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then in another one, they make him a big time NBA player. He's like a seven foot three athlete who can do everything, but he has like a really, really small penis. So, so like a tiny. This is for real. In the movie, in the movie, yeah, seriously. But he has like the (laughs) the smallest, the smallest penis, the smallest penis ever. So, uh, so there's a catch. Now, what I used to do is I used to put people that have these kind of catches in their lives in sell your soul to the devil situations. This is not novel. Other people do this. So sometimes if someone really has it going, but then there's just something they can't get up, I'll be like, yeah, he must have sold his soul to the devil, man. Like, because you get all of this stuff, but there's always one huge catch, like one huge drawback, you know? Okay. LeBron James, I'm not saying that he sold his soul to the devil because he, he, he didn't, okay? And that's not really a thing. But I'm not saying this. But what I'm saying is, he is in the basketball soldier sold to the devil category, and I tell you why. Why? Because it can't just happen for LeBron like it happens for everybody else. You know, like Kobe Bryant wins three championships with Shaq, right? Or God rest our brother's soul. He wins three camp- championships with Shaq. Right? People go, okay, Kobe can't do this by himself. Kobe comes back and he does it by himself. Pretty straightforward. He won championships as the second guy. He won championships as the first guy. All right. Legit championships. Goes through a hard West, and then he he wins. Right? You know what I mean? Shaq keeps knocking on the door, knocking on the door, gets to the point, three championships, three finals, MVPs. You cannot deny, can't say anything about Shaq, blah, blah, blah. He won, went through all the teams, won all the games, did all this stuff, all of that. Jordan, same thing. Magic Johnson went to nine NBA finals, won five, lost four. You can say Magic Johnson had all of these things, tragic magic, dribbled out the clock, all of these things, whatever, whatever. But with LeBron, even when he wins... That's always a thing, okay? So he wins the title in, I think Miami. it's 2011, in Miami, okay. right? Not 11. Dallas won it in 11, 12. Okay. Well, he, he wins it in 12, right? And it was in a strike-shortened season. Mm-hmm. So people are like, eh, whatever. He wins the next one, and it's seemingly because Ray Allen made a shot from the corner on a tap because Greg Popovich didn't have... Tim Duncan in the game, the rebound, it's really a game that most people think that the Spurs should have won. I don't happen to believe that, but it's like another yeah, but situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then he goes to uh to Cleveland. They're down 3-1. Draymond Green gets suspended. Draymond, Draymond Green gets suspended. And then uh they uh they, they the the Warriors lose Bogut. They come back 3-1, even though that is an incredible thing to do. And it's like, Whatever. And then with this one, it's the bubble. So because this was a bubble year and the Lakers were the best team, there's always a yeah, but with LeBron. They always yeah, but this guy. I don't think that any of them are real yeah, buts. I think the first time the Warriors beat the Cavs, the Cavs had lost Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving and it still went six. So Mm -hmm. that's an excuse. I don't think it's a yeah, but. But there's always a yeah, but with LeBron. He's always being compared to someone. That's He's true. always being put up against somebody. It's always what LeBron just did, no one's ever done before, but we're comparing it to people that did stuff that other people had done. You know what I mean? So, like, I mean, no one's gone 6-0 in the finals like Jordan, but still, Michael Jordan had, a, had for, for most purposes, a very conventional basketball career where he showed uncommon excellence. LeBron James has had anything but a conventional basketball career and has done things in a very difficult way. But it seems as if that 
fatal satanic glitch is always there for LeBron. It, there's always a reason for somebody to detract from what he's done. And I just wonder, that must drive him fucking crazy. Well, I think it does, which is why when he stood up there after, on, when he was accepting, you know, the championship trophy MVP, he was like, give me my respect too. I deserve it. And he absolutely does. I wonder why we do this with LeBron. I mean, I would give you the Miami championships, not necessarily Cleveland, just because of him going back and how he won and all of that. I think it for Miami, the reason people did that to him is because of how he came to Miami, you know, the decision and all of that. So people already had like a chip on their shoulders when it came to LeBron and weren't really feeling him. Definitely the bubble, though. I will give you that. There's always going to be kind of like a mark on his record because he won a championship in the bubble. I honestly think to redeem himself, it's almost like it didn't count. And I hate to say that. I'm, I'm not taking away what? from... The That's how counts. it feels. That's how it feels because I, like a, we just we just had a podcast where we were talking about how the ratings were low and people weren't necessarily watching it. Even though somebody did point out to me that digitally the ratings are there, are, are up or somebody high. Somebody pointed out so, to me that the ratings are down for every sport across the board. Uh, TV is what they pointed out to me and said, maybe you want to check it digitally. And I was in there like things are moving away from TV. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a good point. The ratings aren't what they used to be anymore. But I, I feel like because I didn't watch it, I watched the last, maybe the last two games. And I know a lot of other people who didn't, it almost just feels like we were in a bubble watching the game in a bubble. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird to, to explain it. Even though we're in LA and there was a big celebration here about the championship. And, you know, even people in my building were talking about LA, LA, like we got, we brought a champ, the championship back to our city. It just doesn't feel that way. Um, and I think that if he wins again, which it looks like he very well could, when a lot of people thought he wouldn't bring a championship at all, he almost has to do it outside of the bubble. And then maybe we'll stop having that conversation. I don't know. Well, next year uh, is going to be tougher. You know, the Nets are going to be good. The Nets, um, the Brooklyn Nets have Kevin Durant. So that's they have a, be They a, have a roster of other people on the team as well, Van. But they, they have Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, what people, you know, people have. When you talk about basketball players, you talk about Kevin Durant. When I'm talking about basketball, when I'm sitting down to my friends and we're talking about basketball, where everybody's around, you know what we talk about? We talk about yeah. Kevin Durant. We talk about Kevin Durant. Durant, 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 <laughs> Durant. Kevin Durant is what we talk about. KD, the Slim Reaper. You, you, you know that guy? <laughs> What's the next topic, man? <laughs> there is no next topic. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> trying to make something out of nothing. Y'all don't pay him I'm, any attention I'm not anymore. Not trying to make anything out of anything. Not trying to make anything out of anything. All <laughs> right. So, um, I will say this. Uh, on the next podcast, tonight's a very special night. This is coming out on a Wednesday. But tonight, Rach, woohoo! Tonight is the first episode of The Bachelorette featuring Claire Crawley. Okay? Right. It comes on Good tonight. Job. Yeah, Claire Crawley comes on tonight. Uh, so our next podcast... Now, how many times a week does Bachelor come on? Bachelor Once a right? week. Every Tuesday. Once a week. Every Tuesday. So our next podcast, which will be on... It will drop on Friday. I will give my review and my takeaways from the first episode of The Bachelor at my journey as a batch <laughs> begins this week. And I couldn't be happier. I'm so excited for you. And, and the people want this. People, and I, and I do a Bachelor recap podcast and people are looking forward instead to your recap to hear what it's like as a first timer to watch a season. A season like no other. And you're getting a weird season to start with. But Am I, enjoy, I'm a batch, man. I'm a, I'm a batch virgin. Oh, you're a batch virgin. It's almost like I, somebody's taking my hand and leading me into my first fantasy suite ever. <laughs> it's like you got a while before you get there. You're going to be disappointed with the fantasy suites. No, 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 no. Before you actually, I take that back because I have no idea how this season goes. Let me ask you something about the fantasy suites real quick. So, <laughs> you think that the bachelor, you think that the bachelor is leaving money on the table with the fantasy suites? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Why because, does he need to leave money when he when he could have it? No, for no, free. What I mean, no. What I mean is the bachelor, the show. ABC. Oh. 
I think they're leaving money on the table with the fashion suites. This is what I'm saying about the fashion suites. For the women? For, for everyone. This is what I say about the fashion suites. Well, suites. okay, go ahead. Mic them up. Okay? Mic up the fantasy suites. It's a family show. No video. Show. No video. Wait a minute. How can it be a family show when they're fucking in a windmill? It's, it can't be that family. That's the first time, and P, and a lot of the audience hated that. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of people tried to slut shame her for that. Let me tell you something. Easy. Batch on demand. You know what I'm saying? You do batch on demand. $9.99 a month. You get behind the scenes you know shit. What? Batch on demand. <laughs> It's easy work, easy money, full access to mic'd up fantasy suites. Just the audio, just the audio. You because are sick, Van Lathan. Because <laughs> just the audio. Hashtag just the audio. Because by the way, I'm not just talking about listening to people have sex. I'm talking about listening to all the other stuff that might get said. Like think about how enthralling big, it would be. Big conversations happen. See what I'm saying? Big conversations happen. In the fantasy suites. Like, like hey, guys is, tell on each other. They tell all mm-hmm. kinds of shit. Guys go, hey, just to let you know, I'm uncircumcised. Think about how funny that would be to hear <laughs> on, ha- on, on hashtag batch on demand. Hashtag just the audio. Just the audio. I just want to hear the audio. Hashtag just the audio. <laughs> hashtag just the audio. Just the audio. Batch on demand. Just the audio. We don't want to see all of that stuff, but the audio. The audio. I'm going to get you a conversation with the producers and see if see what we can make happen. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. No. Uh, you guys, take your thinking caps off, but do not stop learning. It's going to be a big week. Can't wait to see you guys again. I know that we are late, but we are late for a good reason. I would like to give my un- Dying love to all the indigenous peoples of this earth that built amazing, diverse, and beautiful civilizations everywhere. You are not forgotten. You are not without allies. And you are not without advocates. Whatever we can do, we are here. I am Van Lake. And I'm Rachel Lindsay. Peace. Peace.